let's take our first problem on change in profit sharing ratio. Let's read the question first. A and B who were sharing profits and losses equally agreed to induct C as a partner in their firm. So what happened is there were two partners A and B okay and they were sharing profits and losses equally. If they were sharing profits and losses equally that means what? Half of the profits were for A, half of the profits were for B. This is known as the existing profit sharing ratio. Right? Now both these guys agreed that let's get a new partner in called C. Okay? And C was given how much? C was given one third of the profits of the firm. Right? Now after giving one third of the profits for the firm, the question is what shall be the profit sharing ratio of A after C is inducted as a partner? Right? Now this is actually very simple. How? Let us see that. Now, you know, forget this question for the time being. Let's say for example A and B were two individuals. Okay? Let's say A and B were playing cricket. A had four balls, B had four balls. Right? Both of them had equal number of balls. Suddenly, a guy C comes in and he says, okay, I am going to give you some money. Right? Give me one third of the balls. Right? What will happen is that if he pays the money to both of them, which is the case here, okay, what will happen is both A and B are get, going to give some part of their balls to C, right? In this case, it's 8. So basically, what will happen is uh, 8 is not exactly divisible by 3, okay? Let's say there were 9 balls, right? So both B and A are going to give up some part of their balls to C, right? Similar is the thing which happens in case of partnership also. So this half share is actually nothing but in the nature of these balls which are owned by A, right? So when a new partner comes in, normally he gives the cash to these partners or introduces cash in the firm, okay? Or maybe he brings some assets. So whenever you give the balls to C, what will happen is that the number of balls available with A is going to go down. Similarly, the number of balls with B is going to go down. On these very line, what happened is that whenever a new partner comes in, the share of profits of the new, of the old partner, sorry, goes down. So what will happen is that out of one half, some share is going to be reduced from A out of this one half, some share is going to be reduced from B and whatever is the reduction, let's say this is and this, that is going to be given to C. In this question, what has happened is that we know that C has received one third, okay, but we don't know how much is given by A and how much is given by B, right? So in such cases, what do we do? What we do is we find out that let's say for example, same example. A had 5 balls, B had 5 balls, okay, 5, 5. C comes and he says, give me some balls, okay. So let's say he gets 2 balls, right. So what we mean is that out of these 5, B has given something, out of these 5, A has given something, right. Or in other words, if we just cross out these balls, the total balls available with A and B is how much? 10 minus 2, which is given to C. 8. Right? So similarly, if you just apply this logic here, let me just erase this. After giving one third share to C, what A and B are left with or the combined share of A plus B is equal to 1 minus 1 upon 3. 1 basically represents here the complete fraction or 100%. Or if we just do 3 minus 1, 2 upon 3. 
So both A and B together own how much? They own 2 upon 3. Similar to the fact that when they had 10 balls, they had given away 2. They were left with how many? 8. Now, whenever you are not given as to what is the reduction in the ratio of these two partners, the assumption is that amongst themselves, whatever is left, they are going to continue to share it in the same proportion in which they were having the previous ownership. So if two third is what is left behind, right, then the inherent assumption is that this two third is going to be shared one half, which is the existing sharing ratio of A by A, right? We're not looking at any subtraction or anything. So one half of this will be one third. Similarly, B is going to keep one half of the remainder, two upon three or one upon three. So the new ratio amongst the partner will be how much? 1 upon 3 is to 1 upon 3 is to 1 upon 3. A, we've got 1 upon 3. B, we've got 1 upon 3. And C, we are given that it is 1 upon 3. If you are told to find out the ratio, basically what you need to do further in this case is you should create this denominator as a common denominator. In this case, it's actually already common. So we don't need to do anything else here. Right. But once you create this common denominator, you will get it. We'll see that in the next video. I hope you would have liked this video. OK, if you do, please hit the like button at the bottom of this video. You can also subscribe to our channel or our website. OK, this video is provided to you by www.iadubook.com.